what is an object? That may be a question that a lot of new people to Blender and 3D have. An object, in my opinion, can be labeled as many things, but in Blender, an object is almost like a folder. It's a collection of data. Now, when people say object, they mostly think of mesh or meshes, I should say. Uh, but that's not the only object that we have available to us in Blender. If I press Shift A to add a object, you're going to notice a list here. These are all the different object types, and mesh is just one of them. We've got curves, surfaces, metaballs, text, volumes now, grease pencil, the list goes on. Now, we're only going to be focusing on the mesh type objects today, but essentially I want to sort of just let you know that when we say object, it doesn't always have to mean a mesh type object. This cube here is a mesh type object. We can tell that because in the outliner, the cube, which is a name that we used for our previous lesson, which I highly suggest, and the link for that will be in the top right-hand corner now, essentially where we go over the basics of Blender's UI. But the cube is a mesh, and we can tell that with the upside-down triangle next to it. The light is a light, which is denoted by the light symbol, and the camera is a camera type object denoted by the camera. Okay, so what is a mesh type object exactly? Well, to answer that, we first have to go into something called edit mode. So right now, as you can see up here, we're in something called object mode. And if we actually hover over this, it's gonna tell us what this does. So it sets the objects interaction mode. Every single type of object has a limited amount of set interaction modes available to it. So a mesh type object has, if I open this up, all these interaction modes available to it. Now, just because we're beginning, the object modes that we're mostly going to focus on is object mode and edit mode. And that is it. Let's not get bogged down just yet with all these other modes. While they are quite useful, they're very particular in their design, and you need to know much more before we can start jumping into them. So, let's jump to edit mode. Alternatively, we can press the shortcut tab to get into that. So once we're in edit mode, we're going to notice that our object changes a little bit, and it becomes these collections of dots, lines, and faces. And I use those words quite carefully. This is essentially what a mesh type object is made up of. All meshes are made up of what is known as vertices, edges, and faces. Now you may have noticed that I was clicking these three buttons. These are our selection filters and with them I'm able to filter what exactly I'm able to select. You can hold shift and click on multiple of them to be able to select all different types of these parts of the mesh. But now let's go over what each type that I just said is and how it creates the whole mesh type object. So a vertice is, well, I should say a vertex, excuse me. Uh, a vertex is the basic building blocks of all meshes within 3D. It is a single point in space. It has three values, X, Y, and Z, and that is where it is located in space. We can actually find those exact values by coming over here to the transform. Uh, if you don't have that menu, we can press N, and we're gonna see that this vertex is minus one meter, on X, one meter on Y, and one meter on Z. If I actually change these values, notice how that vertex starts to move. 
We can also move that vertex with any of our tools on our toolbar and manipulate it. And also notice how those numbers are now changing. But a mesh cannot be made up of one single vertex by itself. It needs more information. So here comes in another vertex. This is sort of a basic geometric principle that a dot is a single point and we can't really derive any form from it, whereas two points in space can create a line. So I've got two vertices here and between them, we're noticing a single line. This is an edge and an edge can only be created between two vertices. Now, what you may also have noticed by now is that we also have multiple edges on our object and edges build up the form of what will then become what is known as a face. This is a face. It has structure. It has form. We can see it. It what makes us believe that this piece of information, this data, is a cube. And we can look around this cube and we can see multiple faces. This is essentially the hierarchy of data within a mesh type object. Vertices at the bottom, edges, and then faces. By manipulating these three types of data, we can manipulate the form of the object and create something new that has never been seen before. Now, obviously, this is still just a rhomboid, but you get the idea that by starting from these basic building blocks, they're almost like the cells of a, of a mesh. We can manipulate them into any form that we so desire within our limits, of course. This is going to be limited by your processing power as well as a few other constraints. Just because we're starting out in Blender, uh, I don't want you to jump in, create anything too crazy just yet. Uh, if uh, because we'll definitely be looking at how to do that later on in my tutorials. So if you're keen for those videos, definitely subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified on a new video's release. But right now, what I would like you to do, just because we're starting, is I would like you just to practice manipulating these different structures using the move tool only. So the move tool, so let's move it in X, Z, and Y. And you can move different parts of it. You can move an edge, you can move one vertice, and just, just play around with this shape. It's gonna make you accustomed to what you can and cannot do with these shapes. Then after you're finished, what I would like you to do is then press tab or go back into object mode and behold your very interesting object. So if this video has helped you out, please give it a like. If you think that it has been lacking, give it a dislike and let me know in the comments below where I could have gone better. If you'd like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell button. It helps out the channel so much and you'll be notified on a new video's release. My name's Hayden Falzon from falzonfantasy.com, signing off.